solo leveling is the power fantasy we needed from Giga. This is from a, like a two years ago, but solo leveling is coming up in January. Let's see what it's about. Let's get on with the video. Let's go. Anime let's go. Anime fans mm. are fucking losers. Yes, sir. He's off to a great start. I'm sure a lot of us weebs have got to anime and manga. Isn't this the kid from Hunter x Hunter? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is the this is the average girl weebs bedroom, dude. <laughs> Hold up. This is a Fujoshi's bedroom. At an early age, had a similar experience when they came to our schools or the kids around us. Mm. Some of us may have been ridiculed. Some of us may. I straight up had to be a closet weeb in high school because I was from a redneck town. Straight up, I was the only Asian kid in high school. So, like, I could never talk about anime to other people. No fucking shot, dude. Been told to grow up and stop watching cartoons. And some of us may have just been straight up bullied and called losers. We were outcast Man. in the social hierarchy. And if I'm being real, I think this is a big reason why power fantasy stories have seen the monumental success that they have. Power fantasy? Revenge stories. Two of the most, like, common things that people love. Why? Because we got bullied for being a weeb in high school? Holy shit, hold the fuck up. Is that why I love these revenge stories so much? No. This is fucked. Yeah. Hold up. Wait, you're telling me this guy can beat up all the arrogant jocks and get all the chicks and his secrets OP talent? <laughs> oh, we've seen the scene already. This is SAO again, right? Damn. Why, is the, why does the nice guy never get the girls, huh? Only the asshole jocks gets the girls in high school. It must be me because I watch fucking Naruto at home while everyone else is partying. Is being a gamer? No. It's a shallow reason, but it's true. We might not want to admit it, but the viewership and sales numbers don't lie because we can't seem to stop fucking reading it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it's about time Weeb's got our spotlight as the most oppressed group in the world over the current one. That's right. Gamers. The problem is that the landscape became so how about fucking weeb gamers? Not huh? double it down. We're saturated with them that it became impossible to tell good power fantasy shows from bad power fantasy shows. Ari Furata getting the highlight it deserves, even though the anime kind of bots the manga or the light novel. But what is the in another world with my smartphone? This is another series that haven't been recommended, maybe for a reason. Have you guys seen this? Because they were all bad. When the industry. <laughs> Bad. When the industry realized that all it took was one self-inserted protagonist put in some generic fantasy mm. world, surrounded by a bunch of cardboard cutouts that were easily mistaken for women, they decided to make a lot. Oh, SAO. Mahoka made it on. Let's go. I don't know what this one is. No game, no life. Overlord. Don't know what this one is. Nope. Keep going. Like. Oh, that's a lot more. Hey, Misfit of Kingdom Academy. <laughs> Demon King, right over here, Shield Hero. Don't know this one. We got a lot more shitty shows to watch, guys, don't we? A little more. There oh my go. god. Yo, yo, yo. Chivalry of a Failed Knight appeared here too. Did you guys see it? Did you guys see it? Icky, Icky made it here, right over here. A little more. Boom. Adi Furata, Miss Fucking Chivalry. Oh, Mushoka Tensei. This one, how does someone a Demon Lord? I keep seeing it. Like, um, on these, like, video essay style. I think we should watch it, too, one of these days. Maybe. There we go. Time to add these shows to the list of things I'm gonna watch before Full Metal Alchemist. It got so bad that even me, Mr. Power Fantasy Isekai Trash Man, Grant mm. UK, got bored of it. That is where's, the, where's the harm part? Maybe he wasn't into harm just yet. Come on, I, I know he loves the harm shit, too. UK got bored of it. That is, until I started hearing whispers of this new webcomic called Solo, Solo Leveling. Leveling. A series that had gained immense popularity over the past few years that had put it as the 27th best manga of all time according- 27 might not be top 10, but still, this is of all time. That's kind of insane if you think about it. Mal, the power fantasy series to end all power fantasy series. And you may be thinking, what hmm. revolutionary thing did this series do that no other series before it had done to make its claim above all others? It's Korean. And it's a webtoon. And the art is amazing. Nah, I don't know. There must be a reason why it's been so fucking popular. But the thing that I see the most is the godlike art. And basically how people say it's able to build up the hype so well compared to other power fantasy series. Korean. My first guess! what I tell you? Is that, is that it? I th yes. I thought we were building up to a bigger point. So no. the leveling, originally a Korean manhwa called... Da Honzaman Level Up, which literally means only I level up, which is already kind of spoiling the series, but it's the, it's the fucking title of the show. You know what? I'm not even gonna try. Look, I 
Because like solo leveling implies that maybe he's like grinding by himself, right? Instead of partying up, he's only leveling up by himself in a party. But also that doesn't really imply that in the world only he can level up. I already butchered the Chinese words in the link click video and now you expect me to speak fluent squid game? Don't you ever call me that! Strange gates to fantasy realms gradually appear throughout our world containing an array of powerful monsters and beings. Around the same time as this, select members of humanity gained various powers and used them to combat this ongoing threat. These Isn't that crazy? Like, it's just a coincidence that these gates open up, all these monsters show up like dungeons. And at the same time, humans just started to gain powers? Like, don't you think that's like an endgame plot point that people are overlooking? I, I, I don't know, some god was like, fuck it, let's just have some fun, open some gates up for the monsters and give the humans some powers so that we can have entertainment just watching these monkeys fight. People became known as hunters and grouped themselves in different guilds to team up to assault these gates, killing the monsters and farming the resources within. Like, you know, an MMO. The hero mm. of our story, one Song Jin Wu, is ranked one of the weakest hunters in all of Korea. Even he was literally the weakest according to any news. Refer to wise peers as the literal weakest hunter in the world. Mankind, Basically, yeah. Basically just a little baby man. Little baby, 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 baby man. man. Baby little baby, 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 baby man. However, one day upon his party entering a high level dungeon by mistake, shit very much hits the fan as the monsters within them obliterate their entire party. Apart from the little baby man, of course. Because he's man. the main character. He, die, he somehow managed to clear a secret set of trials within the dungeon and wakes up in a hospital bed after the incident with a- now we we know about the leveling system, but I'm vaguely just like roughly, I I'm not gonna like bother paying too much attention to detail here, even though I am seeing what's going on, because technically it is spoilers, but by January, we'll forget about unique it. Unique ability to literally be able to level up. Yep, Full unique to him. Menus and inventory screens in front of him in the real world, gaining experience and skill trees and all sorts of bullshits like, you know, an MMO. And so begins the rise of Sung Jin Woo from being a little baby man. But how does a level up system give him plastic surgery and make him go from like a five foot two midget to like a six foot four giga chair? Like how, how does that work? Where did he get the K-pop Korean surgery from, bro? becoming an ooh baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Man. <laughs> That's the same guy? Like what the fuck happened? Them Korean it's doctors built this. Your typical isekai power. Work out? No, you can't do push-ups and sit-ups to art to fucking change the structure of your face and grow another foot. It doesn't just happen like that. Oh, like, okay, in Adi Furuta, Hazimi actually went under monsterizations. His DNA was fundamentally changed and warped, and even then, only his hair fucking changed. His face. I mean, it's kind of the same. This is a completely different person, bro. This is not the same person. Story, and if I'm being real, you're absolutely right. The series clearly borrows a lot of elements from the genre, even if it's not technically isekai. But what I think really makes solo leveling work is that it takes elements from your typical OP isekai power okay. fantasy and adds an element from your typical popular shonen anime. You so it's an isekai plus shonen. I thought that isekai shows already had a lot of shonen elements into it. You know, it. the other most popular genre in anime and manga. Hunters are power ranked from S to E. The main mm. character is an underdog working his way up the rankings. Unlike a lot of power fantasy isekai, Sung Jin Woo doesn't instantaneously power up. When he reawakens, he is still an E ranked hunter. He just has the ability to grind his level up and oh boy, does he do some grinding. So it's like a limitless like potential that he has to keep grinding. He doesn't just instantly overnight become OP. It's just like, okay, now at least you have potential to rise up and fight against all these S rank hunters who are there from birth because people in this show, you are given a power and that's it. Like you don't get any better. You don't get any worse. You're just ranked at that point from the beginning and you're just stuck there. I think that's what Annie New said. Sung Jin Woo and only Sung Jin Woo gets access to these special dungeons with high level bosses and rare item drops. And of course, like any true gamer, you gotta do all the optional side quests so you're stupidly overpowered for the final boss. You actually get to see his progression throughout the series. The man is constantly on the verge of death in these dungeons, but he gets okay. rewarded by the level he gains, the weapon he acquires, and the abilities he develops. I guess you could say he was leveling up on his own. Get it? Because it's solo leveling, ha 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 ha. Wait a minute, Get it? that's not the title. What this means though is that it's just that much more satisfying when Sun Jin Woo goes back to the world to take on normal dungeons. Look, seeing someone almost fucking die and doing a life or death optional side dungeon several times above his level, only to go in and breeze through the main quest area to the amazement of others struck- that's the best part, right? The amazement of others, right? This is why we watch these shows, because we want to see the reactions of everyone else that look down on this character, right? 
everybody looks down on the main character. He's like weak according to whatever standardized test some kind of world has. This is how power, power fantasy shows work. And then the main character actually has a really OP power. Nobody realizes it. He saves the day. Everyone's like, no fucking way. How did this weak guy do it? This is insane. And that is the formula of power fantasy shows. I love it. Just keep giving me more of it. Struck a chord with me, all right? Because that's exactly how I play RPGs too. Can I be yes, it's a complete wish fulfillment power fantasy. But you know what? I mean, anime is escapism. You want to live your own degenerate fantasy. You want to have fucking 10 girlfriends? Fuck it, 100 girlfriends. Go watch the 100 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. If you want to watch a fucking power tripping fantasy anime, like watch this shit, right? I love that shit. Exaggerate it more. It felt like he earned it. Look, I'm not going to pretend that the world isn't least stupidly stacked in his favor, though. He is the only hunter who was able to level up while everyone else can only remain at the power level they were right. given when they first. They're all just like stuck at that level, but he can continue to grow. Just became hunters. I repeat. He has the ability to power up while everyone in the world is at a fixed level cap. That's like having the ability to take a shower when everyone around you is at an anime convention. <laughs> what? Wait, I mean, just shit. I've never been to an anime convention, but I can kind of smell that picture, you know? Like, look at that. <laughs> Ugh, stinky. Convention. He gets so stupid. <laughs> that, was, that was a fucking, that was a dumbass analogy. I love it, though. Just anime, just weeps, just getting a fucking straight bullet. He gets so stupidly overleveled that he can outdo anyone in their specialized role. He's a mage, fighter, tank, assassin, healer combo. So he's basically just as toxic he as does everything. Horn cool. League of Legends. Okay. But that's not even his main ability. I feel like at this point I should skip a little bit, right? I, I feel like I uh, don't get to the main ability stuff like that. Escape. And this. Okay. Just gives him more fucking moments to be badass. I don't know cool. what to say. What I love about solo leveling is that it knows what it wants to be and gives you that on steroids. Okay. It ups the ante to a global scale. I think I did a really good job skipping that part. I think that was one spoiler that we shouldn't be spoiled Gale, of. You've got teams from Korea, Japan, China, and a- They mentioned national levels, right? Globally, there's different hunters from different countries. So this is going to get high when we get to that scale. Will season one cover it? Probably not. Probably like we'll lead up to season two content. Of course, America, who are depicted as exactly how you think Koreans would depict Americans. <laughs> this is the average American. This, this, this is the average American compared to, to Koreans. I don't know. He doesn't really look like a hog to me. Like, what is this, dude? 69. I think one major aspect that can't be ignored is that the art is fucking outstanding. It is. You hear stories of mangakas working themselves to death doing weekly manga chapters. So I don't know what kind of fucking black magic the webcomic industry has cast to allow us to enjoy full colored weekly chapters that look- That's the thing about what you guys don't understand if you're completely new to Korean webcomics webtoons. It's like manga is black and white, right? You read left from right. Webtoons is full color and you kind of just like scroll down. It's really easy to just like watch on your phone or just like your iPad. It's, it's, just, it's just vertical scroll. I mean, technically manga is too if you load it up all, all the way, right? But like it's full color. That's one of the coolest thing. Combine that with like pristine art like this, it's so fun to read. Look like this. I mean, just look at this. This puts most manga to shame, but beyond yeah. that, it also uses its medium to its full advantage. Webcomics, as opposed to manga, are not separated via pages. It's a medium designed to be viewed on the phone that allows yeah. you to endlessly scroll down, almost like it's one continuous image. Yep. And what this means is that some of the most impressive moments are accentuated by these panels that seemingly never end. An epic depiction of a battlefield or action that flows seamlessly as you scroll down Look in at a this way that art. you just can't do with manga constrained by a two-page spread. It can make It's like an actual totally different experience. Like you wouldn't think much of it. Like, okay, what's the fucking difference? Like it's still fucking art on a page. I'm still reading it, but you'd be surprised that's the different style or like way of receiving content by just vertically scrolling. It's a completely different experience. You should go try it out. The action easier to follow or the scale of the battle seems so much more grand. I read all of solo leveling in a day. It's one of those series that was infinitely bingeable because after saying all this, I think I'm missing the biggest thing that contributes to this man was success, which Art. is nothing. You know, as I was right. I was going to make a point about how One Punch Man is also really successful, not just because of the story. But be because of the art, because, you know, like One Punch Man 2 was like a webtoon. I mean, not a webtoon. It was like a webcomic with like really shitty art because the person who made it one was not a professional artist. No, his art skill is getting better and better, but his focus was on the story. And then Yusuke Murata 
picked it up. And he's like a godlike artist, right? This guy like drew, I think, I Shield 21. I think he's also drawing, no, the author of I Shield 21 is also doing like um, Sun Ken Rock and sorry, some other series. Anyways, anyways, the really good art, I think, is what separates a lot of these like really hype shows. Watching this video, I really tried to rack my brain as to why solo leveling was so fucking fun and such a huge success. That way, I can end this video off with some cool, introspective moment that really nails down what makes this series so special above all its competition. But then I realized what it really does best is absolutely nothing new. So instead, I'm gonna- So do the- pre-existing shit all the stuff that's been recycled just better execute it better with great art right I talk about kitchen nightmares i fucking love kitchen nightmares and i don't know a single person where are we going with this person who doesn't it's one of those shows where if it comes on or i see someone watching it no matter what i'm doing i'm just like yeah I got time to watch. And if you've never seen a single episode before, let me break it down for you. We open okay. up to a struggling restaurant with a cocky owner who's just like, I have sure. the greatest restaurant in the world, the food is perfect, and that's why the restaurant has put me in $90,000 of debt. In comes Gordon Ramsay, big dick energy, orders everything on the menu. And then shits on the restaurant saying this food is fucking trash. Jeff gets the order and is like, I'm going to cook Chef Ramsay our signature dish. My, <laughs> my. <laughs> Microwaved chicken, baby. So of course, Gordon takes one bite of the chicken, calls the waitress over and is like, This chicken is rawer than my dick after- <laughs> This chicken is rawer than my dick one day after no not November. One day so after what? The kitchen is like, Oi! How are you cooking your food? With a microwave, chef. With a microwave? Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> You know Chef Ramsay is coming. Why, why would you not cook your food on the day? Where, where are we going with this? It my mind. So then of course, Gordon has this inspirational talk that turns everything around. That's like, all right, shut it. I'm about to blow your mind. What if you cook the food? Not in a microwave. a microwave. Insane. <laughs> So they learn to use fresh ingredients and everyone lives happily ever after. I swear, just don't Google it because the restaurant's still probably out of business. And that's Kitchen Nightmares. How does this relate to solo level? What is our microwave equivalent in solo leveling? <laughs> oh, that was awful, but I had way too much fun recording that. My okay. point is, is that I know exactly what I'm getting into. Basically, every episode has an identical, repeatable formula, but I don't care because it's so goddamn entertaining. And if a clip appears in my timeline that shows me that the food is not bussing, you bet your ass I'm going to click on it to see if the food's not bussing. This is... That entire segue about Kitchen Nightmares is that this show does nothing different. It's just a type of show that he really loves, so he'll click it no matter what. Pretty much, okay. That's how I feel with Isekai and a lot of power fantasy shows. At this point, it's kind of just become my comfort food, because when I look at solo leveling, there mm. is not a lot different to what we usually complain about. I've seen a load of comments referring to Sun Jin Woo being like, Haha, this is how Kirito's done right! And I'm just like, wait. What? The man is even more perfect and flawless than Kirito ever was. I mean, the guy- I can't even make that comparison because we haven't watched, right, SAO in this channel, but, like, is it, this guy- I don't know if I want to shit on Kirito or not, because I don't know how Kirito is, like, received in the SAO community. Like, is SAO a good show? Uh, some people shit on it a lot. Some people really hate what, like, what it was, but now people are, like, really hype about the later seasons. I don't really know. We, I can't really compare it to, but he does look pretty epic here. Right, right, right now, right here. Maybe he is like a better Kirito. I don't know. I's functionally in. God, I wish I could go from this to this man. When okay, come on. Like, what the fuck happened here? Like, no, 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 no. And this isn't even showing the height difference, bro. This isn't even the same fucking person. Look at their face, dude. You're telling me by just doing push-ups, by just doing sit-ups, my man was able to turn from this like level one fucking mob member to level 100 mafia boss. This dude looks like he's straight out of a fucking Korean drama, dude. Look at him. There's no shot. This is the same person. Look at this turtleneck. That's right. Look at this turtleneck. And from rice gum to also, also pro tip, pro tip. The biggest difference here in terms of aesthetics, right? Look at the hair. If you want to get like good looking hair, shave the sides. Shave the sides to three millimeter on the sides, dude. If you keep the sides, like there's not much difference between this haircut and this haircut. The only difference is that he has these overgrown sides in the back. If that shit was trimmed and it was put into like an undercut like this, it's gonna look so much better. Anyways, that was that was off topic. From rice gum to full on K-pop in the span of about. That's what I'm saying. Look, rice gum versus fucking. I don't even know who this is. Like T.O.P. G Dragon. I forget. Five chapters. He literally looks like the. 
eighth member of BTS. Straight up! This guy is just out of K-pop, like straight out of fucking Korean drama. So yeah, of course Kirito's gonna lose when he's up against the literal unbeatable army Sung Jin Woo has behind him. K-pop stands. Only recently has enemies been introduced to actually pose a real threat because before that, pretty much every story arc plays out the exact same way. The shit is almost everything. Just gate opens, everyone else goes in. Oh no, we need help. Who can save us? Oh, who is this guy? The supposed e rank hunter shows up and save the day? No way! And just repeat and repeat and repeat until maybe he like promotes and people realize that, oh shit, this guy might actually be strong. And the thing that gets interesting if that ever happens is then the power scaling has to then obviously scale up, right? If this, this character, there can only be a couple moments where the character is un, like, um, looked down upon, right? Even in Mahoka, for example, Onisama Tatsuya, like he is looked down in the earlier parts of season one. That's how it was so good. But at a certain point, people realize this guy's a fucking god. What is he doing here? And at that point, you have to do something different to keep it interesting. We think everyone shits on a show like Sword Art Online for. But for some reason, whenever my brain was like, man, you know what? The story's getting kind of repetitive. Sung Jin Woo would show up and be like, arise. And then the shadows would be like, Bruh! and then Sung Jin Woo would be like, Shwing! and then his eyes would do the glowy thing. And then it was, oh my gosh, Shwing! just start kicking ass. And then everyone else would be like, this, this is what I'm looking for. This, this is what I'm looking for right here, right here. The reactions from everyone else as the main character shows up and saves the day. That's what I care about the most. Be like, I love these split panels of people's just like, just, there's a shock in their face. Look at that. In here, Ryan Tonta. And then my brain would be like, oh man, that was so cool. What was I talking about again? It really is just the rule of cool on crack. Its biggest strength is that it does nothing new, but what it does do is done in the best possible way you can hope for. If you have no interest in these epic power fantasy shows, then this isn't going to change your mind about them at all. But, but if you love it, this is going to be the best show you could possibly watch. If there's just a small part of you that craves that OP protagonist beatdown, this is about as as good as the genre can get. It just works for the medium it's in and for anyone who's like, oh man, I can't wait for the anime adaptation. Uh -huh. I have two words for you. What? CG shadows. Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the different art here of this different minions, maybe it'd be bad, but hopefully it's not. So we'll, we'll see. Go. I'm gonna let that one sink in for a little longer. That might ruin the show. Imagine if we get Ari Furuta of all these different monsters, we get like Ari Furuta CG art, like, oh God. Please, no. Solo leveling is not the 27th best manga of all time. It's not even close, but very few other webcomics get my adrenaline pumping quite like solo leveling does. This is power fantasy at its finest, which is perfect for isekai power fantasy trash like me. And even though it does fall victim to pretty much everything we complain about when it comes to those generic power fantasy stories, predictable and all, it is your definition of turn your brain off fun. Basically, what it boils down to is Sword Art Online. The cooler sword art online. Better essay, oh come on. Better essay. Look at the character. Come on, he looks like he's just Kirito grown up. I mean that's what I call a baby, baby man. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please like and subscribe to Gig's video. Another great video from solo leveling. Of, uh, sorry, about Gig, about solo leveling from Giga. Now this was two years ago, but goddamn, the anime is coming up surely in a month. We're checking out a lot of solo leveling content, so if you guys enjoyed this shit. Stick around, we're gonna be watching it more.